celebrate the Holy Communion. We are going to celebrate the Holy Communion now. So let us all sit in the presence of God with that attitude that we are in the presence of God and we are celebrating the Holy Communion. Okay. So when we think about the Holy Communion, what is the meaning of the Holy Communion? Okay. So we have communion with all the other people sitting here. But at the same time, when we are taking the part of this Holy Communion, just remember that this is the Holy Communion. Holy in between the inverted commas. I mean, Holy Communion because this is established by the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, This is established by the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, I have no, uh, I, I, I don't have much time to speak about uh, all these things, but I will be speaking, making a, making, a, making a short message today. Even last Holy Communion Sunday, we discussed about the God's promises and need of perfecting holiness from 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 uh, speaks about God's promises and need of perfecting holiness. Could you please read that uh, verse? Maybe 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. We will start with that verse. Okay, so we have many promises from the Lord. In order to in order to receive the promises, we need to have the cleansing. Okay, so that is the meaning of that particular verse. Okay, we have many promises from the Lord, the heavenly promises from the Lord, and spiritual promises from the Lord. At the same time, in order to receive that promises, we have to cleanse ourselves. Okay, so we know that. We are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And that cleansing of purity is one of the important process of perfecting holiness. Okay, so God's intention is perfecting holiness. So for that, we need to have the cleansing and the purity. You know, when we are participating in the Holy Communion, God is looking for the people, those who want to, I mean, purify themselves and those who want to perfect themselves in holiness. Perfecting in holiness. I mean, so, you know, today, this morning, I was taking the classes for the adult class, you know, the, the people, you know, I was, I mean, telling them that God is not at all looking for the outward appearance or outward expression of a person, but God is always looking into heart. God is looking into heart. And God says that, I don't want to see that, I mean, how you are looking and how you are, I mean, feeling about the, the other person's outward appearance of, uh, or uh, the expression of that person. But God is saying that, I mean, I am looking only for the heart of a person and that if that, the heart of a person is not defiled, I will be pleased in that person. So that's the reason that I have taken this topic uh, uh, maybe in the, in the previous Sunday also, maybe the Holy, Holy Communion Sunday. You know, we know that we are once sanctified with the blood of Jesus Christ. We are once sanctified with the blood of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But sanctification is a progressive process happens each moment of our life. I mean, sanctification is a progressive process. You know, some of the people are thinking that again, we are already sanctified and what is the need of the sanctification again and again. Every Sunday, pastor is telling that again, you have to be sanctified, sanctified, sanctified. You know, we have to think about, we know what we speak, we know what we do, we know where we go and we know everything. At the same time, God also knows everything and God says that you need the progressing of the sanctification in your daily life. You know, most of the time what is happening we are just thinking okay coming to the coming to the church and worshiping and also attending in the holy communion or going back I mean, going back to the home but god says that whenever you come to the presence of god think about your life and examine about your personal life and submit to your life in the presence of god because god is looking for the sanctification of the people Cleansing of the people, purity of the people. I mean, not only the outward expression, not only the outward appearance, but God is looking for the inward, I mean, or, or inner healing, or inward, I mean, purity or holiness. I mean, and also, sanctification as a continuous process of the separation 
it is it it is it, 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 its meaning is setting apart for a separate purpose. Mm -hmm. That means uh, sanctification or consecration is the meaning is setting apart a person for a special purpose. So you and me are specially separated for a special purpose to glorify the name of the Lord. If you are selected and you, if you are separated and if I am separated for glory of God and I must be holy. You know, I am a vessel in the hands of God, right? You are a vessel in the hands of God. So before we partake in the Holy Communion, think about, I mean, I am a vessel in the hands of God. When you are a vessel in the hands of God, so I must be holy. I must have the purity in order to be used by the hands of God. Amen. So God is looking for the separation. God is looking for the sanctification of the people. And there are certain things from which a Christian must be separated. There are certain things that a Christian must be separated. There are certain places from where a Christian must be separated. And there are certain activities from which a Christian must not be involved. There are many things that a Christian cannot involve with. Amen. So we have to be separated from many things. We have to be, the Christian must be separated from many things. Um, I mean, a Christian, I mean, must be separated from some of the things and also, I mean, the, the places. And also, I mean, we cannot involve in everything. And we have to keep a distance with somebody, those who, who are not walking according to the will of God. This is an important thing. You know, we will be, I mean, having many things in our mind. At the same time, we have to keep a distance with the people, those who are not having the same faith, those who are not having the real conviction about Jesus Christ, those who are having, I mean, uh, those who are not having a real understanding about the word of God because they are leading an unholy life. You know, but when you are a Christian, when you are a believer, you have to keep something away from yourself because that is uh, that is the thing that when God is placing in your life. Amen. And also, you know, because we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 through 16, let us go to that portion also, chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses uh, 14 to 16. You know, it says that there must be a separation between something. There must be a separation between something. Okay, The separation between righteousness or, and lawlessness or righteousness and unrighteousness. Separation between light and darkness. Separation between Christ and Belial. Separation between believer and unbeliever. Separation between temple of God and the idols. I'll be explaining all those points if uh, I'm getting time in the, in the, in the, in the upcoming uh, uh, Sunday. And you know, he is asking a question, how can we bring these opposites together and can you match all these things together? Now, Apostle Paul is asking a question, bringing all these things, what is that? The righteousness and the lawlessness, light and the darkness, Christ and Belial, believer and unbeliever, temple of God and idols, and he is asking, all these things are opposite. But how can you bring all these things together? And he says that, it is not possible. It is not possible. That means the righteousness and the unrighteousness will not go together. Amen. The light and the darkness will not go together. Christ and Belial or Satan will not go together. Believer and unbeliever will not go together. The temple of God has no communion, has no fellowship with the idols. Hallelujah. So that's the reason that we are not worshipping any Idols here. We don't have any idols. We don't have any, any images here. We are worshipping the living God. We Hallelujah. are worshipping the living God. God. Hallelujah. So, in this passage, Apostle Paul explains about five realms where we need separation to cleanse ourselves and perfecting holiness. There are mainly five realms that we should keep the separation. We should keep the separation five areas, five realms. The first one is the first one is the separation in fellowship. The separation in fellowship, that is from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, okay? Chapter 6 verses 14 through 16, okay? The first thing is separation in fellowship. Let us read that 14th verse. Okay, do not be, yes, thank you, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Yes. Do not be 
I mean, uh, unequally yoked with uh, uh, the the unbelievers. Okay, when you when you think about that, you know, I do not be uh, uh, I mean unequally yoked with the unbelievers. Then that are Malayalam that are there. Avishwasi gulo da. Ena illa pina kudel da. Padu kekun thora na amala thoyari kena. Oh, Avishwasi gulo da. Then amal samsaik kya paadi le. Amal aru da poam paadi le. Ita kya argum chena argari jendi kena. The meaning of that is not like that. You know, do not be yoked with the okay. What what is that? Unequally yoked with. Okay, unequally yoked. That means you know the believer and the unbeliever cannot be in equal equal side. You no, know, they cannot go together. At the same time, there is a separation. But you have to love them. You have to speak to them and invite them for the fellowship. And you have to have the fellowship with them at the same time. You no, know, that will not go together always. Okay, but the same thing you have to think about. You know, it, it says that righteousness and the lawlessness and uh, will never go together. And you know the fellowship which is written there, the fellowship, uh, you know, uh, what is the fellowship between the the righteousness and the lawlessness? The word fellowship is mentioned there. That is in Greek. I mean, metoke, metoke is a Greek word, and the meaning of that word is partnership and matching. Partnership and matching. That means righteousness and lawlessness will never match together. Amen. And especially in verse fourteen, especially it says that do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. You know, think about how it is possible. You know, it is not at all possible to yoke with the, the believer and the unbeliever. Especially in Matthew chapter eleven, uh, yeah, uh, Jonathan. Can you take uh, uh, Matthew chapter eleven, verse twenty-nine? Matthew chapter eleven, verse twenty-nine. Yeah, Matthew chapter eleven, um, verse twenty-nine. Uh, yeah. You got it, Jonathan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you you can take the next two words. You, have you taken? Yeah. You can read. If anybody is taken, take it, my yoke upon yes. you and yeah. learn from me, mm. for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Mm. But the day, ah, yeah. Ah. For, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm. Take my yoke upon you. And my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You know, listen very carefully. You know, when we are yoked with Jesus Christ, it says that take my yoke upon you, and because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, one part of the uh, one part of the yoke, I mean, is on our shoulders, and the other part of the yoke is on the shoulder of Jesus Christ. Listen, when the oxes are, I mean, plowing the field. No, one ox will be in the side, and the the other one will be in the right side. So they are going together. Okay, they are working together. They are plowing together. Okay, you know, suppose that it says that I mean, my yoke. Jesus Christ said that my yoke is upon you. That means in one side we are standing there and we are doing something with the yoke of Jesus Christ, and the other side Jesus Christ is there, and we are doing everything together. So that's the reason Apostle Paul is asking a question: that is it possible to the righteousness and the unrighteousness, the light and the darkness, go together? No, it is not possible, because Jesus Christ is in one side, and our shoulder, our shoulder is given for Jesus Christ, and we are holding and we are carrying the yoke of Jesus Christ, and we are moving together. We are moving together. Amen. Hallelujah. You know that is what we understand. You know Jesus must be the lead. Okay, Jesus must be the lead of, and He determines where to go. I mean, on on His direction, and we are submitted to His leadership. Okay, so Jesus Christ will decide where we should go. Okay, where we should go, and what we should do, and we can act only according to the will and purpose of God. Okay, because we have a leadership. We have a we have a I mean person who is leading us, and according to his leadership that we are moving. You know, he pulls us and he guides us. I mean, on his way. No other yoke is equal to his yoke. I mean, and we are supposed to be always under the yoke of Jesus Christ. I mean, so that is the reason I told you that when we are coming for the Holy Communion, think about: Am I under the yoke of Jesus Christ? I mean, am I separated? In the matter of fellowship, fellowship is a 
and an important thing that we have to think about. And when we fellowship together, we have to have